Hello and welcome to another Mia King Monday with me, The Heart Critic, where on Monday I look at the films of one of my favourite film directors, Takashi Miike. Now today I am looking at a film that I actually did years ago when I first started doing Mia King Monday, um, but the video was crap and there was an awful skit in it, so I ended up taking it down. So I'm re-looking at it on this edition because it is one of my favourites. And that is the 2001 bizarre masterpiece, Visitor Q. Now the film is a weird dark comedy that follows a dysfunctional family who are all dealing with their own separate problems that has caused them to become distant from each other. Then one day a stranger comes to stay. And from there an odd series of events occurs that changes everything. Now a lot of Miyake's films can obviously be very divisive and this one in particular is guaranteed to give you a range of different reactions and it's one of my favourites to show people because of that. There is a lot of strange and disturbing things that happen and I think a lot of people would just write this off as garbage which I think is understandable. My first time actually knowing about this film was a few years prior to me even getting into Kashi Miyake. I remember reading up on some of his films and this one in particular shocked me. I was absolutely just disgusted about the description of the contents and thought Miyake was some kind of just sick mad freak. And so then a few years later when I actually started watching Miyake's films and enjoying them this one and Ichi the Killer in particular were the two I was most reluctant about finally watching. But then, much like Ichi the Killer, I watched it and had an absolute blast. This film is very entertaining and at times hilarious. Yes, there are a lot of discomforting things that happen in this movie, but there's also reasons and motivations behind what occurs. The film deals with some very sexually and emotionally repressed characters who find strange outlets to really just deal with and, pen and release that pent up frustration which in the long run actually helps them. But also because of its execution and its darkly humorous tone some of it is just plain funny. I mean the scene that is probably the most disturbing in this film also happens to be its funniest and that's a hard thing to pull off having this kind of mixture of emotions in just one scene but it's done really well and it's not just because of some great direction from Miyake but it's also because of an incredible lead performance from Kinichi Endo. Now Endo turns up in a lot of Miyake's films but usually he just plays a smaller role but here he gets to stand out as the lead, you know, he plays a, the father who is a reporter that is struggling to find a story and he goes through very depraved lengths to try and get one. And Endo just brings so much energy to this character, you know, and you know, he plays him a little over the top and clearly has a sense of fun with this role and it makes him very compelling and he just steals the show because of that. And that's not to discount the rest of the cast either, who are also good, and includes the likes of Shinguku Endo, Fujiko, Jun Muto, and Kasushi Watanabe. Now this was actually released direct to video as part of something known as Love Cinema, which was this series that were meant to be low budget exercises in understanding the benefits of utilizing low cost digital video to film. And Miyake and his team clearly had a lot of freedom with this and they definitely made the most of it, making something that is just very unique. And the low budget digital video aesthetic really works here and at times is actually filmed um, somewhat like a documentary which gives it this odd sense of realism which when mixed with the bizarre goings on creates quite an interesting dichotomy. And the documentary style is used particularly in the opening sequence which actually makes you feel like you're watching this uncomfortable uh, amateur homemade porn at first. But honestly I love it. I think I've seen this film the most out of all of Miyake's films. I mean it's only 84 minutes so it's got a rather short runtime, 
But also, like I said, I like to show people it and see their reactions, which is where a lot of my rewatches have come from it. Now, I'm not going to go into detail on what the disturbing content is here, but I will say that it mostly revolves around sex and certain taboos with a bit of abuse and violence mixed in. This isn't an easy film to get into, and if you like very dark humour, there's a good chance you might enjoy it, but at the same time, there is a good chance you're going to hate it still. It really isn't for everyone. I'd say that it's a must-see for Miyake fans because it is one of Miyake's most unique and weird and just standout films that I personally think is one of his best. But some of the content may be a bit too much for people and hard to find funny. And that's completely understandable. So yeah, definitely proceed with caution with this one. But hopefully you'll enjoy it in some capacity. You know, like I said, it's one of my favourites. And I'd give it the full 5 hearts out of 5. So, yeah. Thank you for watching. I am the Heart Critic and this has been my Heartfelt Opinion. I shall see you next time.